Hi everyone, Niall here. Welcome back to the H20BIM channel. Today we're going to talk about how you can model your fascias, soffits and gutters in Revit. We're also going to go into some of the finer details that I've seen other tutorials gloss over such as how you can model your downpipes or downspouts, how you can apply end caps to the end of your gutters and how you can also apply a soffit to the underside of a roof gable or a sloped roof. Um, a lot of the tutorials seem to only focus on the software placement on a hip or the flat. And then finally I'm going to show you how you can close out the awkward end details using your facial profiles so that you have something similar to this when you're finished. So without further ado, we're going to close down this completed variant and go to an empty variant where we can start populating the data. And we're going to work from the simplest of the creation methodologies through to the most complex until we are finished with what I have shown here. So I'm just going to minimize this window. And as you can see, I've got a blank project file with just the walls and the roof already in place. If you're very new to Revit and you're not familiar with how to model roofs, I have a full beginner's tutorial that takes you through the steps of creating multiple roof variants in Revit using the roof tools. I'm going to link that up in the top right corner there. You'll see a little eye that'll appear and you can go and view that whenever you'd like. I also have an associated blog post that's very in-depth on 8020bim.com if you'd like to check that out instead. So in order to begin, we're going to go to our architecture tab and we're going to start by placing our fascias. So under the roof, we're going to drop down to fascia. I'm going to ignore that uh, save warning. And as you can see on the properties tab here, we have fascia standard. Okay. So the way the fascia placement works is it selects the edge of the roof that you want to place the fascia associated to. So we're going to pick the top of areas. So selecting there, you can see that we have placed our fascia board to the outside face. What I'm going to do is I'm going to progress all the way around the continuous boundary of the roof so that we've closed our fascia. Now, you can see now that this is deemed one continuous modeled element and we can add or remove segments if we wish. So I can select this and I can remove that segment if I wish, but I don't wish. So I'm going to leave that alone. Okay. We're also going to note that the fascia depth isn't sufficient for the roof depth. So selecting the fascia profile, I'm going to go into the edit type dialog under the properties and we're going to select a different profile. So the way the fascia works is it extrudes a profile that's already been created around the boundary that you have chosen. So I'm going to select from the standard fascia profiles the 19 by 286 mil profile board. I'm also going to set the material to a white plastic for the moment uh, just to represent the PVC. I'm not too concerned about getting the material designation right, that's a whole exercise in itself. So pressing OK, you will see now that we have a greater depth on our fascia. Now looking again, you can see that it's not quite sufficient still to meet the full depth of our roof. So in this instance, we're going to go down to our families, we're going to navigate to our profiles, and under profiles fascia flat, I'm going to right click. Sorry, I'm just going to have a look at this one here first. And you can see we have a height and a thickness already associated. So what I'm going to do in this instance is I'm going to duplicate I'm going to set that thickness to 320 mil, okay, under our name. And then similarly, I'm going to change the height to 320 to match our new name, okay. Press OK there. And then I'm going to select our standard fascia. I'm going to edit type. And on the drop down, I'm going to select 320. And now you can see that we have sufficient fascia depth to cover our roof. So now that we've placed our fascia for our entire roof, the next step is to start placing our soffits okay and the soffit functions a little bit different than the fascia, the fascia. we don't just select the, the lines in a chain that we want we actually need to go to our plan view to place our soffits accurately so we're going to go to our roof base plan here and what we're going to need to do is we're going to change this to wireframe so we can see our walls below now going to the architecture tab we can go to the roof drop down and we can pick soffit and the first thing you're going to see is generic soffit 300 mil. So the way the soffit actually functions is much the same as the roof tools, the roof by footprint tool actually functions. 
So what we're going to do in order to create a new software, so we're going to edit type and we're going to duplicate and we're going to call it generic 20 millimeter instead. Okay. And under the structure, we're going to edit it, edit it and we're going to select 20 mil for the thickness. And then for our material, we're going to pick the same plastic. So we're matching our fascia. I'm going to press OK and OK. And now we've created our new generic 20 mil soffit. Next we want to do is assign our boundary lines for our soffit. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to select pick roof edges. And once you select that tool, you can click anywhere on your roof and it'll pick the full boundary of the roof edges. Next, I'm going to select pick walls. And I'm going to start to pick the walls that I want to form the, out, the inside boundary. One thing to note when you're placing your pick walls lines is that you have this flip option. So if you end up on the internal face of the wall, you can merely just flip it to the external as such. Okay. And as you can see, these automatically lock to our roof boundary and our wall boundaries. Okay. So I'm going to finish this and I'm going to snap back to our 3D view. And you can see here that this isn't at the correct level. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the right hand side on the view cube and I'm just going to pull this down. And then using the move tool, I'm going to move the bottom of it to align to the bottom of our fascia board. So now you can see that we have a soffit that's working on this boundary, but it's not actually working for our gable at all. We need the, the soffit board to follow the gable line of the roof. So this method of modeling doesn't really function very well for us because it's not following the gable. If we had a hip roof, for example, it would be perfect because the roof would be falling to meet the soffit location. So how do we resolve this and get our soffit to follow the contours of the roof? So I'm going to select that again. I'm going to go back to our roof base plan and I'm going to edit the boundary. And in editing the boundary, I'm going to select the lines highlighted as shown. I'm going to delete them. And I'm going to delete this internal line as well. Okay. I'm going to use the trim tool and I'm only going to apply my soffit to one of the eaves ends of the roof. So I'm going to finish that with the green tick. And while it's still selected, I'm going to press MM to mirror, and I'm going to select the ridge line of the roof. And now when we go to 3D view, you can see we have a soffit board for each of the eaves on the roof. But as of yet, we don't have a soffit appended to the underside of the gable. So now we have to model our gable soffits. Going back to the roof base plan, we're going to go to the roof drop down, soffit, and we're going to draw a rectangle to represent our soffit for one half of one gable. Okay, so clicking from the start point of the eaves soffit, we're going to extend all the way up to the center line of our roof. What people don't know about the soffit tool when you're drafting it is that you can actually select one of the edges and apply the defined slope much, much the same way as you would with creating your roof by footprint. So I'm going to select defined slope there and I'm going to set that slope to be 30 degrees to match our roof slope. And I'm going to finish. Now, when I go to the 3D view, you'll see that it's kind of lost in space. We can't really see it. So I'm going to click and drag. I may be placed on a different plane. <laughs> I might have placed it on a different plane. There you go. Apologies. And I'm going to just move that down vertically in space. And then I'm going to move it back up so that it aligns to the underside of our fascia. So as you can see, we have this detail here that's going to be closed out after the fact, but we're going to come back to that now in a moment. So now that we've applied our soft, we've applied our soffit in one of our eaves directions on one side of our roof, we just need to mirror and duplicate it around. So again, going to the top view, I'm going to press MM and I'm going to pick the ridge line of the roof. And then I'm going to click and drag over this edge here. And under the filters, I'm going to turn off the wall selection. Snap back to the top and I'm going to mirror from the midpoint of the roof across. And you should see now that we've very clearly designated soffits all the way around under our roof gables, under our roof gables. So the next thing we want to do is to detail out these corners correctly. Okay. 
So the way we do this is very simple. I'm going to show just one corner only because you have to do it per gable end of the roof. And I want the tutorial to be relatively short. So looking at this here, I'm going to go to our roof breakdown again and we're going to pick our fascia again. What we're going to do on our fascia is we're going to select the lines to apply our fascia to. Okay, so I've selected that line. I'm going to select this line. Now here, selecting this variant, the problem is I'm after selecting them both at the same time, and that's not what I wanted. So I'm going to undo, and I'm going to start over. I'm going to go roof, fascia, and I'm going to select that one edge first. And then I'm going to go back to roof, fascia again, and I'm going to select the other edge. And then I'm going to flip that vertically. Now on this side here, I'm going to give it an offset in the vertical by 20 mil, and it should snap down. But on this side here, you can see we have a bit of a difficult situation because our profile is too deep for the alignment. So I'm actually going to edit this profile type. I'm going to duplicate and I'm going to call it um, fascia end detail. And I'm going to change that profile to 235 and see if it's roughly the correct size. And as you can see, it is. So now that we've actually closed these off, all we need to do is use our modify tool, select join, and join our fascia to our various soffits and fascias throughout. It can be a little bit tricky to select the objects, so just use tab if you're not getting your correct object. And as you can see now, we've closed out our gable end detail with our fascia and soffits boards as required. And again, I could join these two if we went, wanted. So, now that we know how to model in, entire, in its entirety our fascia and our soffit details for the gable roof, we want to start placing our gutters. So the, the initial placement of the gutter is the very same as the fascia placement. We go to our architecture tab, our architecture tab, we go roof, and on the drop down we select gutter. And then we select the leading edge for our gutter. Now you can see that you can't actually visually see the gutter at the moment and that's because it's after flipping to the inside face. So I'm going to flip it around and now it's on the outside face. Now I have made an error here. Okay. And I'm going to delete that because what I actually did is pick the roof edge rather than the fascia edge. So I'm going to pick the fascia edge instead. So going back into roof, I'm going to go down to gutter and select the fascia edge. And now you can see we have an initial gutter profile. So selecting the gutter and profile, I'm going to edit the type here and I want it to be slightly larger. So under the profiles, you have a standard 150 by 150 as default in most templates. And yet again, on our material, I'm just going to select the white plastic and press OK. So now we've created our gutter and I want to apply the same gutter to the reverse side of the roof. So architecture, roof, gutter, and I'm going to select the leading edge of the fascia. And because we're using the same gutter type, it will have the same dimensions. Now, how do we model the end caps of the gutters? There's a few different pools of thought on this, schools of thought on this, and some people use model in place elements where they would either create a mass and extrude a 10 mil, or they would create a component, model in place component, and extrude it. I think while both of these are serviceable, there's a better way of doing it. And the way I would suggest you do it is as follows. Going back down to our profiles families again, I'm going to open up our gutter bevel here. I'm just going to right click and edit this. And you'll see it opens the family. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to select this top lead line and I'm going to un unlock it from the edge. I'm going to drag it to meet the reverse edge. And now I'm going to delete all the internal lines for our gutter profile and this top line here. And using the trim extend command T or I'm going to close it off. And what I've done now is create a solid profile. So I'm going to file, save as family, and I'm going to just call this end cap. And I'm going to load it into our project. Going back to our 3D view, I'm now going to create a new gutter. 
over our existing gutter, which is a little bit counterintuitive, but bear with me. So going to roof, on the dropdown, I'm going to select gutter. I'm going to edit type, I'm going to duplicate, and I'm going to call it gutter end cap. And under the profile here, I'm going to scroll down, up to end cap 150 by 150, which is the size of the gutter profile we were using originally. I'm going to keep the material as plastic because we want to be able to join them after the fact. And I'm going to press OK. And I'm going to select the lead edge of the fascia again. And what you're going to see here is one solid profile that's been extruded all the way down the gutter. Now, needless to say, that doesn't function as an end cap, but the solution here is to simply select one of the nodes and drag it all the way back until you have 20 mil or my preference 10 mil. And now you can see that you've actually created your end cap on that side of the gutter. Similarly, we're just going to place another gutter again in the same place. Selecting the end cap variant and selecting the leading edge of the fascia. And on the reverse side of the roof, we're going to drag the end cap back to 10 mil. And now, as before with the fascias, and the soffit detail, we can go to our modify tab, select join, and join our gutter and our end cap. And now you have a very, very clean and presentable end cap detail for your gutter. So finally, what we need to do now is model our downspout or our downpipes. And this can trip people up. Yet again, I've seen a lot of people using model in place families um, or extruding some sort of profile. Uh, whereas in reality, the simplest way to do this is via a systems pipe. So going into the system tab, you will see that we have pipe. And under the pipe, you're going to have various properties that need to be assigned. And there's a few properties that are often missed in the assignment. That means that people don't have a comfort in generating the pipes. Okay. So the first thing to do is in your pipe types, we're going to set this diameter to an 80 mil pipe. And then under the edit type, we're going to go to routing preferences. And you'll see that on our elbow, we can select min size, max size, much the same as the pipe segment, but we don't actually have an elbow family loaded. And a lot of people get tripped up here because they can't connect their pipes to one another. So the first thing we have to do before we can actually create our downpipe is to import a, or insert a, family elbow type okay sorry an elbow family <laughs> so going into the insert tab we can go to our load family sorry and on the drop down we're going to go to pipes pipe and we're going to go to fittings and under generic i'm just going to select the elbow generic okay and i'm going to press okay then going back to our systems tab, I'm going to select pipe and in the edit type dialog, I'm going to go to routing preferences and under the elbow, I'm going to select generic and I'm going to select the same sizes as the min max. Okay. I'm going to press okay. Go to press okay again. And now we can begin to draft our pipe. In order to draft our pipe accurately, I'm going to go to our east elevation. Oh, sorry. I'll go to our west elevation so I can see the closed detail and I'm going to select pipe. I'm going to draw from just above the base there, vertically down. As such. Now you can see I'm after overlapping there on the end detail of the wall. So I'm going to kick that back just until it's outside the edge of the footprint of the wall rising. And I'll just drag it down to meet that spot. And now, as simple as that, we've created the piping for our downpipes on our Reva file. Sorry, just let me move this out of the way. Um, but the problem is, is you don't necessarily have this placed on the correct plane. So going to our 3D view, now we can tab to select the pipe chain, and then we can rotate around our building and move it manually into a position that suits us like so and then going to the top if needs be we can use our mirror tools again 
and we can start to mirror that pipe downpipe assembly all the way around our building and now you can see at each of the corners we have a downpipe so guys that completes this very quick and dirty tutorial about how you can create your fascias in Revit, your soffits in Revit, your guttering in Revit, your gutter end caps in Revit, your downpipe assemblies in Revit, as well as detailing out the underside of a soffit at a roof fall where the gable is and finishing out a gable end correctly. I hope you've enjoyed this content. We're going to have a blog post breaking down this as a step-by-step -step tutorial over at 8020bim.com. The link will be down in the description. As ever, if you've liked this or you have any comments or suggestions, please let me know down below. Like, comment, and subscribe to the 8020bim YouTube channel, and we'll see you for the next tutorial. The next time we are looking at roofs, we will be looking at maybe some commercial or industrial applications where we have a parapet roof um, with kind of a panel construction and we might have an internal guttering detail that needs to be resolved and modeled. So I'll try follow suit soon with something similar to that. So you have um, both the domestic and small scale commercial and then a variant for the large scale commercial and industrial applications. As ever, thanks again for watching and we'll see you again. Take care guys, bye bye.